Hello and welcome to the third part in this tutorial series, or well not really tutorial series, or series of programming videos on developing a chess engine in C. In this part we're going to start actually writing a little bit of code and start with some of the definitions that we need in our program. In the vice.c file I've added an include to include our definitions header file and in the definitions header file I've now made some changes. The first thing I've done is I've put an include, what's called an include guard around everything else that's going to be contained inside the file. So I've got if n d e f, so if not defined defs underscore h, define defs underscore h and the end of this if at the bottom of the file. And this is just there to guard against multiple includes of this header file when the program is linked, when the compiler is linking the program because we'll be including this header file in every source code file that we write for this engine. The next thing I've got here is I've defined a new type here. It's an unsigned long long and I've called it, or used the alias, capital U64. So this is an undersigned, unsigned, sorry, 64-bit integer which we'll be using in the program. I then defined using capital letters name I've called it vice 1.0 and I've defined brd underscore sq underscore num so board square number and 120 because you'll remember from previously in the previous video we're going to make an array of 120 squares on the board. So now we need to think about some of the other definitions that we'll need in the program and I've already prepared these definitions in an empty file here which I'm going to copy and paste in one by one and explain what they are so that I don't sit here typing absolutely for hours. The first thing we're going to copy in is the numbers for whoops, the pieces as numerator constants. So we've got the value of 0 representing empty so a square inside our array of integers will be have the value of 0 if it's empty. And then for the pieces here a w prefix represents white and a small b represents black and I've simply got white pawn, white knight, white bishop, white rook, white queen, white king, and black pawn, black knight, black bishop, black rook, black queen, black king. So a black king has a value of 12, a white pawn has a numerical value of 1. So if back in our array here, the value at index 55 in the array was a 1, the program knows that there's a white pawn sitting on that square. The next two lines I'm going to copy and paste in are for the rank and file definitions. I'll just make a load of space here. And as explained previously, the files are A to H and the ranks are 1 to 8. And of course, all arrays are indexed by naught in C. So file A has a value of naught up to file H, which will have a value of 7. And on the end, I've put a, a file none which have the value of 8, and likewise I've done exactly the same for the ranks. It just makes it easier in the program later on to know what you're dealing with when you can read a constant value rather than just the number. The next thing I want to put in is the colours that we're going to be using in the game. White will be 0, black will be 1, and both will be 2. And now the squares of the board themselves, labelled by their files and ranks. So square A1 starts at 21, as you can see here, or even better, here. And you can see the final row, or the 8th rank, starts with A8 is 91, and then we'll finish with H8 having a value of 98, which means I have something called no square which will have the value of 99 which will be used as the border squares so when the program is generating moves if it comes across a square with a value of 99 stored in it then it will say this square is off board okay that'll make some sense when we start setting the board up and the final thing I wanted to include here is just for using true or false is false as zero and a constant saying that true is 1. The make file staying exactly the same as it was before, we're only compiling vice.c and assuming all is okay, if I type 
make here it should compile yes it does I'm not going to run it because it doesn't actually do anything yet okay so that's it for this video that's the first few definitions that we've added in there shouldn't be anything here that's particularly difficult it should make a whole lot of sense the next video we'll start looking at coding in our board structure thanks for listening taking the time comments criticisms welcome as always on YouTube